Hello, you're watching Tales of Gear. Welcome back. My name is Tom and before I start today's video, I'd like to thank all the new subscribers and um, for all the likes and comments on my shorts. I see you really like those. I will keep uh, making some and um, by the time this video is out, I think I will reach uh, 1000 subscribers. This is huge for me. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for your support. Today's video is about a uh, QXL dive light. Here it is. Well, uh, you have seen my last video on the QXL dive lights. You can watch uh, this video um, about the QXL lights. Um, I have a link in the description below. Uh, now, this one will find a new home very soon, but before I ship it out, it will be converted in one of the uh, setups that uh, was done by Delta Force. Now uh, the buyer of this light, the link is in the description below, uh, well he requested it to be converted to the true Larry Wickers setup and uh, let me show you a picture of it. This is Larry with his M723 that has this light mounted under the barrel on the handguard in this very specific configuration where the switch is in the middle. So uh, this is the goal and in today's video I will uh, show you the process on uh, converting this type light into this setup. Uh, please note it's not a tutorial uh, so don't expect um, detailed explanation of every step. It will be a short clip uh, just to show the steps that are done to convert it in this specific setup. Now before starting with that let me show you how this uh, dive light actually works. As you can see it has absolutely no switch. Um, it takes three of these C-cell batteries. These are already inside and now the light is off and to turn it on you need to turn the bezel. Here it is. It's on and the opposite way it's off. So uh, this is how it works. Now when it's um, wired uh, to the switch it needs to be screwed down so all the way down to be on and with the switch you will turn it off on and off. So um, in order to make this conversion, we will need, of course, this all original QXL dive light. We will need some rubber inner tubing. Also, some wires. These are vintage wires, as used back in the day. We will need two hose clamps. I have already prepared these hose clamps. These are stainless steel uh, drilled. Uh, with a bolt nut inside as you can see and of course the type of the clamp is the correct one as it's seen on many reference pictures this one is painted as well and ready to go and of course we need the switch this is a all original black switch waterproof basically these are the components that we need uh, of course, I will need some spray paint, black spray paint to paint the front part of it and the back part, the rest will be covered in this inner tubing. And uh, I will need a drill, some uh, soldering equipment and uh, yeah, well, um, that being said, let me show you this short clip and we will get back when everything is ready and you will see the final result. Enjoy!
here it is. This is the end result of the work. As you have seen in the short clip, um, we have seen the few uh, steps I had to go through to actually make this one. Um, here it is, ready to go, mounted to the gun. This is what it looks like. Here, real quick, the other side of it. I love the looks. And of course, it's working. So, uh, it was really fun to work on that. And, um, well, it was almost like time travel. I'm a little bit a geek when it comes to stuff like that. Can you imagine a table full of cube cell lights? Uh, yellow ones, blue ones, uh, red ones, uh, whatever. Uh, a bunch of these switches, uh, those stainless steel hose clamps, and a guy assembling these. It's really cool to think about that, and it was really cool to go through this, the steps that that guy went through when assembling these uh, lights back in the day. So, just a thought uh, to think about, and when you think about it, uh, having this one here is even cooler. One more thing I like to point out is uh, some of you might say these parts here of the hose clamp will get in the way. Well, um, actually these serve multiple purpose. Uh, first off is to keep the switch in the place. Okay. Secondly, it's a guard so you don't activate the switch by accident. And thirdly, it is so comfortable to rest the thumb on this here and to hold it. You get such a great grip without uh, being, being afraid to activate the switch. So when you hold it like that firmly, you can't activate it. Move the hand a little bit and you're able to activate the switch. Just awesome. And uh, as you have seen in the reference picture, this is the setup used by Levy Wickers. And um, yeah, let me take it off and show you. And this is how quick this goes. One more uh, feature that is pretty cool is, now look, when I press the switch, it goes on. If you want to, if you decide not to use the light, but you don't want to take out the batteries, simply unscrew a little bit the bezel and there is no contact and you're good to go. When you want to use it, screw it all the way down and the light goes on. Um, this is the way it's mounted, okay. And when you want to take out the batteries, simply carefully unscrew the bezel like that. Watch out for the spring tension and hold the bezel like that so that the internals don't fall out. Um, here are the batteries, actually the converters I'm using. But I suggest you take the positive side and put it like this inside. It will work, but it, will, um, it won't make too much tension on the bulb when screwing down. So this is the way you put in the batteries. The positive side goes inside first. Um, here it is from the inside. You can see that. All right. And just real quick, the internals here. So we have the reflector and the other parts. We have also the spare bulb here. All right, so everything is ready to go. This one will be shipped shortly and I'm sure the new owner will be very happy with it. I will keep it without batteries this time. So, you can adjust the switch a little bit, that's alright, it won't fall out. Well, this is it. Uh, if you're saying, alright, why should I uh, go for a, uh, so to speak, clone uh, when using original QXL light, uh, original switch, etc., uh, I'll just try to pick up the authentic made one. Well, good luck with that, because it is less likely that you will ever find an authentic made one. Um, 
Reason being, uh, once the Surefire flashlights were introduced and the Delta guys started using those, um, these weapon lights uh, they've made were stored and later on they were trashed. Only uh, the ones that the operator uh, took home uh, might have survived, but um, I personally don't know anyone that knows somebody that has it. So, uh, for now I'm aware of two authentic made ones, one with a red button switch and the uh, one shown in the Larry Wicker's uh, M723 video. So these are the two confirmed ones to be being authentic. As for the gangster grip, that's another story. I have one authentic one and I think that's pretty much it. I haven't seen other gangster grips that, that are authentic. Uh, only the DC Depth custom made ones, which are clones. All right, so um, the best and the closest you can get to a original one is to get your hands on a original QXL light and to have it uh, converted and modified in one of the many setups Delta did. This is the closest you can get. Well, we're coming to the end uh, of this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.